Yeah, no, no, drink. We don't have to drink up. I'll drink too. Right. Drink up. Oh, Let's right. drink up. All Let's of a sudden, act like we're shooting on film. We're burning. Yeah, the first thing we gotta do over here is we gotta wet the palate, man. Cheers, man. Yeah, yeah. Every sip is costing us seventy-five dollars. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are so excited to have with us a wonderful friend who is also a fellow podcaster, all over voiceover. He is also someone you see and hear all over the place in movies, commercials, TV shows, animation, games, narration, promos, uh, everywhere. <laughs> I've run out of air. Mm. He's incredible. He's Kiff Vanden Heuvel. We're getting buzzed. Kiff VH. VH. <laughs> Van Halen. Well, Dude, well. for real. What? Sorry. I have to Welcome. say, man. Thank you. You are just. So great to so be here with you guys. So freaking cool. Oh, I dude. Like, I know that Stacy's known you for quite some time now, but I just got to meet you for the first time face to face and have a nice conversation with you about a week or so ago, yeah. uh, being on your amazing mm -hmm. podcast, oh, all over, voice over. Um, <laughs> dot com. And, 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 and I didn't know what to expect because a lot of the times when you go to, uh, when you do podcasts, you know, yeah, people ask you questions, but sure. you were just like so genuinely mm -hmm. Like I forgot, I was literally on a podcast, and we great. were having such a such great a conversation, conversation that I, I was able to like talk about things that I don't normally talk about on podcasts. Oh, wow. And I got so many emails from like people out there going like, "Chuck, I never knew that about you, man! Yeah. Wow, yeah. dude, it was, I had to listen to it like four times because." And you know, people taking notes and saying, "Oh my God, when Stacy was talking about this, it just hit my heart," and blah blah. And I'm like, "Kiff." You brought that out. No Ooh. pressure, Kiff. No, oh, I don't feel any we pressure. Get, I, no, for us. Oh, for you guys. To make it as magical a conversation. <laughs> yeah, man. You know <laughs> Thank what? You. Everything's possible. We're doing this. All right. We're making magic. It's going to be as magical as We're making as it magic. Was. Yeah. What, 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 and, and hold on, just right oh, off the bat. Right off the bat. Bragging. Your intro, you got, yeah, right no, no. off the bat. No, no, it's not intro. It's, yeah, we're actually in the he show. He has to get oh, his wow. brag out. I just <laughs> want everybody to know that allovervoiceover.com, were we the last, last episode? Yes, number, you're the most recent episode, number 71. All over VO.com. All over VO.com. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number 71. So go there, people subscribe. Yeah. Yes. Subscribe, follow. You're on. You're on uh, Apple uh, uh, as yeah. well, and and just everywhere. That's right. So do it because mm -hmm. it's really, really cool. Yes, stuff. and you've had great guests. You've had really, really great guests. Oh my god! And now you're our guest. You're How in, do you feel? You're Keith? in the house. I'm of so Vigil excited Vigil. to be here with you guys. Like, <laughs> and I, 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 honestly, I felt 100 percent the same way when you guys were on the show. Like, we just, we just connected and laughed and had the greatest time. And we and did. I think that's been one of the things that doing a podcast has really given me is this wonderful connection to people that mm -hmm. that I wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, it was like I said the other day, it was like whenever you're in the office, you're sitting around and you talk, you know, politics, sports, whatever, yeah. and we don't talk craft, right. but like, right. or you really don't talk history or or you'll be in this in this connection, and all of a sudden Scott is yeah, like, it's like come uh, on. Stacey, you're in the yeah. and you're like, okay, and, yeah. it's, and you're done. I might yeah. not see you after. We always like talk about cooking. Yes. And and candy making and ah, And you're baking. the one person who I was talking about making marshmallows and you're like Yes. Yeah, of course. Marshmallows. Like, were they toasted coconut marshmallows? Did you put Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. We can speak. We can speak like oh. we can speak senior level classes. We're not even talking right now. Like yes. Yes. most people are like everything what? cooking, baking, that's my love language. For sure. <laughs> Just so you know. It's so um awesome. but okay, so I wanna know, you you are such a sponge whether it's you're always reading something or yeah. music or connecting with people, were you always curious? Like, how were you growing up? Like, have you always been the kid that was like, how is that happening? Why is that happening? What's behind it? I think that, I think that grew. Um, I, I mean, I grew up in, in Cutlerville, Michigan, which is, you know, uh, right, right here. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the, 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 I remember going to the Gaines Public Library uh, to go try to find books on animation, just because I loved. I, I once once I got Yogi Bear in my head mm -hmm. and in my voice, uh, all I wanted to do was figure out cartooning and yeah. Yeah. and to do that stuff. And there was one book in the entire system, wow. so I just you know like how to draw fifty different cartoon characters, and that was the one place I could kind of get that energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
you know, and then Star Wars hit and my dad took me to see Star Wars on my eighth birthday. And then all I wanted to watch, do you, do you remember the, the, uh, the making of Star Wars special that they did on CBS? And it was like yes. the yes. behind the scenes. Yes. Like, it, was, it's a big deal. Yes. It is a big it deal, is. man. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that, that was like, how did they, how do they do that? And how can, how can I do that? And it mm -hmm. like spawns this, this desire to grab a video camera and, and screw around in the backyard, and I would conscript my little brothers to be, so you know, funny. other actors and <laughs> and uh, you know makeup artists and all that yeah, other stuff. Yeah. But it was it, it was um, I, I say a lot on my show too. Like I, uh, the 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 subtitle to the movie Birdman is the unexpected virtue of ignorance, mm -hmm. and I feel like that kind of momentum and excitement and interest in all things related to film and television. Um, really captured my imagination. And if right. I didn't know it, I tried to pr figure out how right, to know. Right. Yeah. Even yeah. if it was wrong. Yeah, right. and passion. Yeah. Like you could tell yeah. that you're yeah. just like really, really passionate. Oh, absolutely. About no, it, he yeah, like you know? breathes it. Yeah. It like comes, it's and it's and it's sincere. It's not yeah. like, ah, I'm so Hollywood. You are you are so you're one of the most authentic people yeah. Jeez, I you. know about this is truly your passion. Yeah. You get to do this. You don't have to do it. Absolutely. You get to. And so Absolutely. I love and, that. And yeah. by the way, I want to just mention real quick that in a little while we're gonna put you on the spot. Oh, yeah, Chuck okay. is excited. Your celebrity <laughs> impressions uh, yes. are <laughs> just out of control. Like I didn't know you were that good. I was just listening to <laughs> stuff on your website he last keeps night. Looping and your stuff. I was He's like, like laughing out like oh my god. God, let your ear down. It sounds exactly like it. So, awesome. well, thank you. I I'm might request to. a few. Well, you got it. Um, and you know what? You can pepper them throughout if you'd like. You can answer the question as Vince <laughs> Vaughn if you'd like. <laughs> Vince gets to answer a lot of questions. He does. Uh, he does. He right. does. Vince but, but is a talker. Garbage, you know, he's how he talks, That's right? The words he oh uses. Yeah. Well, I found. Well, see, Vince Vaughn, I found in the posture. So like I was I was trying to put together an anime, uh, an impressions reel. I was in Chicago. I'm standing on the corner on the on the fifth on the on the red line platform of Belmont, and it's loud out. Everyone's got headphones on, so I'm just talking. Because normally you'd work it out in the car when yes. you're driving around, but I'm in ah. Chicago. I'm not in a car, so I'm fine. I'm talking like up, and all of a sudden I find that there he is in the back of my throat. And the funny thing is, if you put a tie on him and slow him down a little bit, it's Tom Hanks. Right. And that like so being able to find Hanks is more more of a subdued energy. And in, in this place. But then, you know, like just, it's, I don't so know. I, I love yeah. dialing it. And so like, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. You're so, so good, good. Man. So good. So you uh, are a, an expert, man, with um, improv. And yeah. in fact, you teach it. Yeah. So A, I want to know all about the teaching aspect of it. And then I want to know how it has actually helped you teaching it. Well, but you're a Second a City alum, which, yeah. Is, yeah, of which is a major awesome major. credit to have. So, I mean, yeah. uh, my adventure with improvisation started when I was um, in college and we went to the American College Theater Festival and there yeah. were some performers uh, who were doing workshops and I saw like them doing, I, I don't remember even what the game was. It might've been some kind of genre game. And it was just like, what? Like the kind of play that you could do on the playground, but as grownups with, mm -hmm. with grown-up emotions and grown-up ideas and reference level. It was super fun. So then we started improvising in college and then when, um, and doing shows around campus and stuff like that and just working out the skills and kind of in a weird way, validating that way of acting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, there's this great supplemental in the DVD to the movie Collateral where Jamie Foxx is talking about, I'm going to go work with Michael Mann and work with Tom Cruise. And I'm an, I'm an impressions guy. I came from impressions. I work from the outside in and I'm going to get my lunch eaten. And then Tom Cruise and Michael Mann are like, Jamie's skill set is so vast and he's so fast and he makes strong choices. And, and I'm trying to, I start from inside and work my way out to build this character. Yeah. And it was like this, this, like watching that, I remember getting choked up going, it's validating the, the way I taught myself to, to act in a way. Like yeah. I had one or two acting classes in college. Like that was it. But it was, was just it. an innate yes. feeling of what felt natural for you. As a mimic, I learned acting by watching Harrison Ford in Blade Runner, Star Wars, obviously, but then mm -hmm. like Patriot Games. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I well, I literally watched Patriot Games last night <laughs> and, and realized there's like five things from that movie I say all the time. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm not coming in here with my head in my hand. That's a line from yeah. that movie. Yeah. And like, <laughs> like, I say that all the time. Anyway, yeah. uh, so, so improv in a way helped me 
figure out my what kind of a performer I am. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the reason I brought the college stuff is we we formed a team after we graduated called River City Improv. They're still around, and um, and we improvised and played uh, short form games. And when I got to Second City in Detroit, um, I, I learned more about like the forms are great, but it's more about improv's not about improv comedy. Mm -hmm. Improv is about living truthfully in the moment, listening, reacting, right. connecting, connecting. Yeah. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And what I really appreciated about the Second City, and particularly the training center, was that the work we were doing was just kind of uh, reinforcing those notions. Yeah. And at Second City, using that work to write yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. um, just picked up Viola Spolin's book, um, it's improvisations for the theater, but a guide for the director. Yeah. And in the preface, she talks about it being that these improv games are, uh, she developed them as a language so that very experienced people could rehearse a show with very inexperienced people mm -hmm. and that they could build a common language between the uh, two. Ah, yeah, because everyone's coming from a different skill right. set and experience. Yeah. Someone's been, you know, I've been in the West End for 70 years. Mm -hmm. Very old actor coming into this show yes. with a couple kids just graduated from college, but they have the opportunity to play together, mm -hmm. to work on those same skills. And who cares what the language is that gets you there, what matters is what we do in that moment when we're together. Right, yeah. right. You know? Yeah. So so you you have the theater background, you have the TV background, the film background. Yeah. But voiceover for uh improv for voiceover. Yeah. How does one and what are some of the sort of basic principles if you could share with people sure. watching sure. to approach, okay, I have this piece of commercial copy. I, it's scripted, but how do I, you know, because because we know there's yeah. hundreds, sometimes thousands of people reading the same audition copy. I don't, I very so rarely. So how do we make it pop? I very rarely read the copy as written when it's commercial cop. Almost mm. every time I get a commercial audition, I, it's 95% what's there in the script. Yeah. Right. 95 to 97%. Right. But I try to improvise a, a, a way in at the top or just make the words a little bit more my own. And it's kind of like, I, I feel like those kind of things I'll stammer. Im improv, this is the other thing. I think there's a misconception about improv that improv is uh, is writing uh, or improv is making up words. Mm -hmm. Improv is, like we just said, living truthfully in the moment. The words are the bones, the bones of the script. And and the emotional life is the muscle, right? It's the, it's the tendons. It's, it's the action. It's what we do. So our job is to look at these bones and, and go, what is this muscle going to look and feel like? Mm -hmm. That's a good way of yeah, looking at it. Yeah, that's really good way to like say that. yeah. Fantastic. And yeah. then when yeah. you approach it from that perspective, you're coming from, from um, a, a really connected place. And whatever the method is that you get there, mm -hmm. you know, whether yeah. it's whether it's pre-life or whether you're inspired by, oh, wow, I'm going to try doing a green apple read. I'm going to be inspired by a piece of music or this piece of copy really connects to me or, or it's anthemic. I get it. I'm going to do Bill Murray and Stripes. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. right. like what, whatever your approach is, but that, so in a way to me, that's what improv brings to it. And it's, it's acting, but it's, you know, it's that it's mm -hmm. the other thing that, that performing at second city for, I mean, I was on stage for two and a half years in two different theaters and what the gift of that, of performing six, six shows a week was my choices are disposable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Who cares? If the yes. audience doesn't like it, I got another choice. I got another choice. Yeah. I got another choice. Yeah. I got another yeah. choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like and, that. And the, and the lack fearless. of fear yes. in knowing that it doesn't matter. Right. You can change things and and fear does not have a place, right? I'm learning or, how to, I, I've been studying with, with Terry Notary as a motion capture uh, mm -hmm. performer. Brilliant. Um, performer, one of the best acting teachers I've ever worked with. And, and his approach to fear is really fascinating. Uh, we feel it. Why do we try to avoid it? Fear is a natural emotion that we experience. Totally. And, and all it is is energy. Mm -hmm. So if you can take that, recognize it. If it's something that's dangerous, remove yourself from it. But if it's, right. an, if it's an audition, yeah. that's, that's, right? That's the bad fear. Yeah. That's the bad yeah. fear. Yeah. Then use that energy to move. The flight, right? yes. But if the energy is like, oh, this is, I'm anxious. Um, uh, this makes me uncomfortable. Why not 
uh, recognize that and then use that. All it is is energy and yeah. use that to channel propel yourself it. exactly mm -hmm. towards, per, per, channel it towards excellence. Yeah. Channel it towards energy and connection. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So good. That's fantastic, yeah. man. Yeah. Awesome. He's a great coach. We're not <laughs> even in a session right teaching. now. I haven't teaching for a while, so you pick it up. Yes. You you teach improv. Yes. And now, because of modern technology, you can yeah. teach yeah. it over Skype. Yes. yes. Meaning that it doesn't matter where you anyway. live. That's right. You could actually work with Kiff, which is like, phew, man, that's it's gold right there. It's like Christmas every day. How do people <laughs> how, do, how do people get a hold of you in regards so, to coaching with you? I've been with with that for the past maybe year and a half. Uh, Rebecca Ha and lovethatrebecca.com has been having uh, online classes for improv and I do an advanced improv workout through Rebecca. So uh, she sets it up and we get together on, on Monday mornings and we're uh, this wonderful group of people spread out all over the world. That's mm -hmm. and, fantastic. And How many we, people uh, normally do the... It varies. Normally we have a group that's roughly, I want to say eight, nine, uh -huh. which is kind of kind of the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, you know, 10, 12. Sometimes it's five or six who are in there. As long as we got a quorum. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, can, I can, do a, you can do a class with three, four people. It just means more reps. But it's also like we'll do... We'll do improv games, we'll do spot improv, we'll do script work. So let's take a look at some video game copy, you know, and let's see how how can we bring in, you know, this is the other way where improv helps. It's not just uh, bones and muscles, which is mm -hmm. great, but, but also like environment. Right. Like this kind of stuff, like scenes don't happen in your booth. They happen right. in the in a tavern, in On a the cop car. Field. Exactly. Yeah. All yeah. those places. So what are we doing? emotionally to create that environment for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember when I, I know you make demos, so I apologize for sharing this, but, but I'm, I'll just first, cut it. We'll cut perfect, it out of the cut video, it out. We can cut it out. But, <laughs> but my first, I didn't, I had, I didn't know you. I had, I had, I, I didn't know you. I'm sorry. I'm on your couch and I'm telling you, uh, I made, I made my first okay. uh, video game reel and, and I had been studying with Fraley and, um, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, do, do like a, do like a, uh, infantry guy. I was like, all right, all right. So I wrote a little line about screaming about the infantry or whatever. But I remember putting myself in this little closet we were in in Chicago and hunching down on the ground with the microphone mm -hmm. and really creating that space yeah. to give that sense of urgency mm -hmm. and intensity and danger. Uh, yeah, yeah, and drama, all those things. And, um, and it really came to life. And mm -hmm. like, Allowing myself the freedom within my booth to create that sort of a that sort of a space. Yeah. Right. And and it's okay to like, you know, move your mic stand around. You know, like get yes. it into a position where you can get yourself into a space that serves you. Yeah. Just because your booth is what it is and there's a thing doesn't mean that you have to be beholden to what it is. As right. long as you're communicating, yeah. you know, I know if, that if I was working with you, I could say, Chuck, I want to do something, but I want to get like I, I want to get down on the floor and in a corner. I think you'd give me a really vulnerable take on that. Is that something we could explore? You know? I'd, I'd be, Kiff, you're a little nutty right now, but let's try it. <laughs> I'll just throw the mic on the floor. Uh, yes, yeah. Go lie down. Right? Who Have knows? a good time. We'll get What's it. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Chuck was like, that was interesting. Yeah, and I then had, I hear, did I you hear a guy. <laughs> yes. We brought in a stool uh -huh. and he sat on the top part of the stool because yeah. he wanted to be, you know, like this. Uh huh. Yeah, with his and, feet on the and, stool. And we, and I was, I thought he was being crazy, but his take was insane. Wow. You gotta yeah. do what you gotta do. Like just out of control. Right. Yeah. So whatever you gotta do. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. The space exists for you to create within. Yeah, exactly. You know, and when we talk about self direction, like that mm -hmm. idea of like, oh well, I'm gonna, I'm trying to juggle this thing. Stop juggling. Like, leave the director outside. The director is not has no place in the space where you're trying to read. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I mean, I'm not immune to that. I mean, there are times where, especially if a piece of copy has, has like some stakes to it, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's a series regular or, oh, it's a, right. you know, it's a national campaign. I'm going to, I've got the benefit of being able to call up the guys over at CESD and say, hey, can I come in tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm. And, and, and get coached on it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And just yes. know that, and trust the booth directors enough, both Scott and Patrick to be like, so dude, great. you got it. Yeah. You I know? know. Yeah. Done. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you, you. You don't, you don't want to flex all your muscles at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and not That's only right. that, yeah. sometimes when you have something that is of, 
you know, a higher caliber, mm -hmm. you kind of get a little bit too like, oh, this would be really, yeah. really good. And your take on it may be a little bit too invested yeah. as opposed to if you go to your agent or your booth director and they help you out with it. Now it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm just going right. uh, to, and, yeah. you, and you, you'll have a different read, a totally. different yeah. perspective. Yeah. And it's learning too how to untether from that expectation exactly. of what that job is. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, and that's, 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 that ties back into that fear yeah. of yep. like, oh, this job could change my life. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it yeah. could. So could this little radio spot that you don't think will, yeah. but, the, mm -hmm. but the ripples that could come off of you doing a right. Maryland Lotto spot yeah. could reverberate for years in a way yeah. that you didn't expect. Well, yeah. and it's also just accepting that there's so many things before the audition and after the audition mm -hmm. that are out of your control. Yeah, that's right. All you can control is the brilliance that you try to create in the space Absolutely. that you and have control over. That's yeah, right. and you know what's really cool, man, about the whole improv thing? Um, because, I mean, you, you talk to people like, you know, uh, uh, Rob Paulson and sure. stuff like that, where, and, and other major uh, animation video game people that are saying, you know, man, improv is like, you got to have yeah. that skill. And I've done, and this is not boasting, but I, I literally have worked, I've been doing demos for a billion years, and I've worked with the top of the top, cream of the crop pros, yeah. and also with beginners, you know, people that are getting in the trenches and starting to do their... Their, their thing, and the one common denominator that I see everywhere it, it would be a lack of improv, a lack of just allowing yourself to not be perfect, to get it all wrong yeah. at first, you know what I mean? Yeah. To find that space that you're talking about and really, really just, just dive in you know, heart first instead of mind first, you yes. know, and, and, and then create and then fix the T's, fix the P's, fix the, yeah. the, the, the technical Maybe. stuff. Maybe. If that. If yeah. that. You know, I, the, yeah. I'm a Detroit Pistons fan and. Oh, uh, dude, you got to go. Sorry. All right. Well, it's, this was funny. Saying, I'm getting uh, Detroit Jack. Pistons. But 2004, Rip Hamilton. Oh, I thought that was baseball. And they would it's say, oh, <laughs> they said all the time <laughs> during the playoffs, they'd lose a game and, you know, they got seven and they'd blow a game and. And they'd be out there and they'd be interviewing them, you know, and they'd say, ah, well, what, what do you feel? You know, huh? you lost this game, you know? And then they'd always go, ah, oh, you know, we always say, if it ain't rough, it ain't right. Mm. And if we, you know, and uh, f for the purposes of this conversation, yeah. I'll end that story there. Because if it ain't rough, it ain't right. I in my it. reads, in my, in my, uh, like, the, the, the stuff that I've been consistently called back or book has been stammery. It's like been real. rough, real takes, mm -hmm. and like, I mean, I've been I've been lucky enough to be uh, be one of the brand voices for IFC uh, cable channel for yeah. the mm -hmm. past couple of years, and the 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 audition for one of those jobs was we want the world's worst voiceover actor. That was the description. So <laughs> I did I did two takes. One take was a really flat sort of Mitch Hedbergy type of read. Yeah, just kind of talking. Exactly. And then the second take was I made a bowl of cereal and I ate the cereal throughout the read, crunching, slobbering. <laughs> that won me the job. And I was so afraid to send it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't afraid of the client. I was I was afraid of what of what Donna might think, my agent in New York, yeah. where she would be like, "Have you lost your mind?" But yeah. she emailed me immediately, like that was hilarious, you know, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, uh, you know, remembering that the people who are part of your team believe in you and want you to yes. be the fullest of the win. kind of insanity that you can be. Yeah. Bring it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, love, I that. love that. And I hope that every single person out there right now mm -hmm. is taking deep notes on what we just hit on because mm -hmm. that right there is, I feel, that secret ingredient that could either make you stay where you're at or make you freaking take off like a rocket. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone's Agreed. everyone's unique. Absolutely. Right. Because the someone else makes a bowl of cereal, it's going to be different cereal, different chewing. Di I mean, it's going to be completely different. It right. could even be beef jerky. Yeah. It could be. And what's your uh, what's your cereal? That's the choice you got to <laughs> make. What's your what's cereal? What's your cereal? Um, so, Kif, I know that you do a lot of coaching for voiceover yes. and for the Calmansons, which yes. we love, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and you teach uh, a foundation class and also for the working actor. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit, because this is what I wanna know. I've, yeah. always want, I've always loved talking to coaches and getting their insight on this. You yourself work with a lot of people that are starting in the business, right? Yeah. And, and, and even actors that are now saying, I think I wanna do voiceover now. Mm -hmm. What are the hurdles that you see with these people mm -hmm. that you feel either help them or really hurt them? 
Huh. Okay. I'll start with a movie reference. Okay, good. Um, do you know the movie The Professional? Yes. Of course. Okay. Do you remember how Leon starts by having Matilda use a sniper rifle? Yep. Because he says, you can't kill with a knife until it's your most, until you are trained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's the most intimate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Commercial reads are the knife. Mm. Commercial, those are the intimate. Yes. Because you're, you're, you're coming to it, you're, you're bringing yourself. There is nothing between you and that copy. No. You know what I mean? Yep. Now, if I get a piece of animation copy, there's going to be part of me in there, but I may be putting a mask on to play this character. You know exactly. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not a figure. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah. But yeah. like, uh, you know, if I'm doing an impression, I'm putting on the mask of yeah. whoever I'm doing. Yeah. If I'm doing a video game, I'm putting on my tough guy or finding where that tough guy is in me. But if I'm just sitting here talking about how being a, a father and using Pampers, I have I, there can be, it's just pure truth. Mm -hmm. It has to be. And that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, that people have to mitigate uh, a sense of um, uh, fear, willingness to be vulnerable, willingness to risk, willingness to stop trying to sound like a voiceover actor. Oh, mm -hmm. and just that's a the, big one, too. Not being perfect. You know, not being perfect. Yeah. yeah. If it ain't rough, it ain't right. Mm -hmm. And letting that microphone do what the microphone does best, which is just listen to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just take in every little subtle thing and and trust that you don't have to do anything in a really kind of weird way yeah. you know it's like um well because this happens a lot to you too is he'll be talk chuck will be talking to someone in the meeting about the demo and then they're like great and then they get behind the mic and they start talking like this right and they start and you're like, what happened to the real? Acting. What yeah. happened they to? Because they're becoming, like, now yeah. I'm yeah. acting, imitating when that a voice actor. Mike slides than in front of your actor, face. A hundred percent. And like, you know, and I, 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 not not every student runs into that. You see, you see varying degrees of it. And mm -hmm. I yeah. think people do are a little bit more savvy about it. But there is, there's, you know, when whenever you walk into a new space, there's new anxiety. For many people, it's the first time they've gotten that close to a microphone. It's the mm -hmm. first time they've been alone in that space and there's a glass and people are staring at you and it's just yeah. that that odd little, whenever you're ready. Yeah. And the silence. Right. Yeah. And then you see them talking and you're like, are they talking about right. me? <laughs> and, and they always say like, they're ordering lunch. It's not about you. Right. But you're like, huh, what? And then it's like, yeah. And you don't hear, you're going, oh no. You know, just, it's not about you all the time. It's really not. Yeah. And like, I remember I was doing, um, when I was teaching, I had an intro to voiceover class over at Second City that I would teach. And it was basically like, I was doing VO. And this I started this class in Chicago, at Second City in Chicago. And I was directing and doing that kind of stuff. And people were like, did I just hear you on Advanced Auto Parts? I'm like, yeah. How do you get into that? And enough people did that that was mm -hmm. like, can we just put a class together and I'll bring a mic and teach people how to do it. Yeah. And that was it. And... Um, uh, I told you that story because, well, that, that was the origin of me teaching voiceover class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, um, I, I felt like in that process of trying to work through it, because you would, I would start with commercial and then go to animation because it was what everyone wanted to do. But mm -hmm. I realized that it was better to start with the big broad because that's what everybody wants to do. Everybody comes into these classes going, I want to be an animation guy. I yeah. want to be yeah. I want to be one of the big, you know, I I love animation. Yeah, especially the younger people, right? Right, right. They all want to yeah. Yeah. And great. Yes, do it. Um but you also need to find even if it's like I don't want to do commercial, I don't care. I don't care what you think you're going to do over the course of your career. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be able to do some of the things that I've gotten to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or think that it was a thing that I was passionate about doing. Right. You know, but like I wanted to know myself as an artist. It's like I wanted to dive deeper and deeper and closer to to who I am and who I am in this experience and what right, life right. is. Right. right. Yeah. And well, commercials are stories. Completely. It's just different. There maybe isn't a strange tooth or a strange world, but there is yeah. a world. And, it, and, and versatility is something that I think really describes you. You know, versatility is something that's part of your yeah, you, you are system. extremely versatile, man. Is that Thank something you. that you recognize that you needed? Is it something that just sort of happened? I mean, because obviously there's people watching that are like, I don't do 75 different genres and 45 different impressions and voices yeah. and all that. But is that something that you set out to accomplish or it just sort of happened? I think it was more... 
I, for me, I think it's been about um, a, a combination of things. Like, uh, I like I like casting a wide net yeah. mm -hmm. because sometimes you're the voice of a network and sometimes you're not. And mm -hmm. sometimes you've got three campaigns running and sometimes you got nothing running. Right. Yeah. But if I can narrate audiobook, if I can f do, you know, stuff for shows, if I can, if I know how to edit... I can, you know, edit <laughs> edit things if I know how to if I know how to self tape. I, I'm like like it, it's it was certainly a survival mechanism in yeah. terms mm -hmm. of can I do it? Huh? I can. I, I do believe that everything is knowable. I really do. Um, I forget what movie it's from, but uh, it's from The Edge, the mm -hmm. the uh, Anthony Hopkins uh, Alec Baldwin film, and Anthony Hopkins repeats movie. over and over to Bob in the wilderness. What well, one man can do, another can do. Yeah, we're gonna kill this bear because yeah. what one man can do, another can do, and that has been like a little bit of a mantra. That and then yeah. lines from Patriot Games, and then the Untouchables. Yeah. yeah, and like that is so true. It's it's accessible if you explore it and if you have the will to try to find it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and um, I mean, improv certainly has led me into that space. Well, and, yeah, because you know, it yeah. took it took a lot of that fear. Right. You associate it differently now, so yeah. you're not afraid of it because you've never done it. And I came up in a regional market. I yeah. came up in Detroit was where I got SAG. And the work in Detroit was industrial and the occasional commercial. Yeah. And then in Cleveland, it was radio spots for McDonald's. And then almost, you know, I don't know if, what the market's like yeah. now. But it was mostly mostly non-union. And I wasn't mm -hmm. prepared to, to go FICOR at that point. So I would drive to Detroit. And I'll do, that's where the union work was. Exactly. And then when I moved to Chicago, it was 95% commercial. That's the work I was doing. And in that market, you go, I wonder how high I can jump. Mm -hmm. And and I did really well there, but it was like, if we go to Los Angeles, that's where the, where the net really widens out, where that's where I can find video games. That's where I can become a park voice. That's where I can, Right, you and know, your on-camera career. And an on-camera yeah, career. Yeah, because you're all over the place. Well, that concludes part one with our good buddy, uh, I was going to say Chris. <laughs> Chris. Chris. <laughs> oh, no. Kiff Van Den Heuvel. Very so good, that I get it, and you get it. Say hey, it 10 times fast. That includes part one with our awesome friend, Kiff. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, we will. Remember to look at the credits to see where you can follow all of us on social. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. Buzz! 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 buzz. 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 Yeah. Oh, come on, buzz! Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.